What's up everyone and welcome back to my beginner series on how to get started in the miniature hobby. This is video number three and we are going to take a look at how to prime your miniatures. <laughs> So that's right, this is video number three. In the second video, we took Mad-Eye Moody here and put him together, glued him together, and then talked about how to remove any mold lines and flash. And since we've done all that, we are now ready to move on to the next step, which is priming the model. First thing that you need is just some clean water. This, um, I'm just using tap water. Uh, Portland, Oregon has good tap water doesn't have very many chemicals in it and what I'm adding is just a little bit of dish soap so I'm just using Dawn it doesn't really matter which kind you use big name brand little brand doesn't matter just a little bit of soap in there and a toothbrush and what we're gonna do is clean off our mini and this is a good time to do a whole bunch of minis if you want to um, while you are scrubbing, let the brushes of the toothbrush do the work. Do not put force into it because you could easily snap off pieces of these little resin mi miniatures. So, what you're doing here is you're removing any of the um, release agent that is put on these miniatures to make sure that they pop out of the mold. And if they don't get cleaned off, what might happen is that the primer will begin to peel off. Now that doesn't always happen, and a lot of people might say that they've never washed their miniature and it came out perfect. And that is true. I have not washed many minis, and they have come out perfect. But, the thing is, is once you have one that you start working on, you're loving, and it then starts to peel off and get all crackly, then you know that you messed up and it's too late at that point. So, after rinsing them off, then you're going to let them dry completely. So I'm going to let him dry and we'll come back in a couple minutes and I'll show you how to prime him. Alright, so after you have washed your model all up and gotten off all of the stuff that... Um, the release agent that will make the paint not stick we can now prime our model and what I think the pretty much best way to do this or the way that most people do it is uh, to use some of this white tack uh, sometimes called blue tack comes in different colors it's very inexpensive and it's meant for holding like posters and papers to your wall without destroying the paint so all you need is a small piece of that. It's very, very soft and it is reusable. And I just have here a piece of corrugated cardboard. I'm going to put my model onto this. And what you don't want to do is pile it up on the model. You want to try to make as much of the model available to get paint on it as possible. And so you can see here, I just have his feet in it. This allows me to you know, flip him around and make sure that I can get all of him sprayed without um, having to touch the model myself. Now some people like to do one model at a time, but the reason I have this large piece of card is so that I can do a couple models. So I'm going to stick a few models on this, then we're going to go outside, and that is where I'm going to be using my Krylon Flat Black, well Ultra Black Primer. Now this, remember, is Primer not primer and paint, but I'll meet you outside in just a second. All right, before we go outside, I just want to go over real quick what I'm going to be doing because I'm gonna show you in the video what I'm doing, but because it's windy outside, I'm gonna cut the sound down and just play like a little song over it while I'm doing it. But what you're going to see is I'm gonna take my can, make sure it's shaken up really, really well. I'm gonna be wearing a latex glove to ensure that I don't paint my hand. And we're gonna take this, and because it's slightly cold outside, the best thing to do is be um, at a, a mid-distance of what it says on the can. If it's really hot outside, you sometimes have to get a little bit closer, but you'll want to be about one foot, about 12 inches away, 
and you're going to spray quickly shh, across and then shh, back shh, across and do that a couple times until you have even coat all the way around. What you do not want to do is go shh on each one of them and try to just coat it all in one blast up close. Yes, it will cover it instantly, but you'll also lose all of the detail that you have on these models. The point is, is you're going to try to get a very, very even coverage. Then what I'm going to do to show the next potential step, this is if you want to do it, is I am going to use my ultra white or my ultra flat white primer and we're going to do a zenithal highlight and a zenithal highlight is showing basically the sun at its zenith which is top down lighting the model on each of them top down what I'm going to do is then take the the models hold them this way and do a spray all the way across with a white and just all the way across like this and that will be after the black has dried and so we'll have full coverage of black and then just from the top down it will be highlighting where the light is and that will make it easier for uh, picking out your colors when you're highlighting also when you make really thin layers it'll make the top naturally look lighter than the bottom so it does a lot of things for you is that mandatory of course it is not you can do just black you can do just white you can buy gray you can if you wanted to paint all of these models green you could go and buy green and start with the green base coat and then your actual base coating is much quicker so there's a whole bunch of options of what you can do but if you want to have a whole bunch of different colors on the model like these guys are going to have just because uh you know they're human models and they're going to have clothing of all different shades and types then doing a black base with a white zenithal is pretty much the quickest slash best way to do it um, some people will say laying down a gray for, from like 45 degrees basically instead of going you know full this and full this you go somewhere about here and then hit it with gray and then come back and hit it with white and then you have the smoothest gradient but, um, you know, those are expert level ones. What, what I would suggest is if it's your very first time painting, just use one color and learn how your colors react with that. And then later on, you can try white and then see how your colors react with that. Um, and then if you are in the next stages in which you've already done that and you want to take it up a notch, you can go with the black base with the white on top. And that will give you the zenithal highlights that you see most... Um, most professionals are going to instantly do that uh, unless they have a specific reason not to. It's just the, it's pretty much the standard for getting your uh, bases laid down. So now I'm going to go outside and you'll see me do that with a uh, little music over it. All right, so we let them dry for a good 10, 15 minutes. And you can see here that the white leaves sort of a speckled look on it. The black is very, very, very well covered, but the white just sort of leaves like this speckled look on it. And that happens when you use rattle cans, um, spray paint in other words. So... How do you get it to not be speckled like that? Well, number one, if you're just painting game pieces, don't worry about it so much. It's not a big deal. But number two is you could use brush on primer or you could use airbrushes. And I have some, well, it's around here somewhere. I can't remember where I put it, but 
I have a uh, brush on primer from Vallejo um, that you brush on as if it was a paint and it works very very well and that one will have no speckle it does make it almost impossible to do a good zenithal, zenithal prime though you would need either an airbrush and an airbrush will give you a much cleaner finish than this um, so you can just move and pop them off of there and then basically the only thing that's not primed is the bottom of his feet so he's all ready to be painted and then the rest of the Death Eaters here are all ready to be painted. But yeah, if you really want it to be smooth, you're going to need something other than a rattle can. But you can see here, this actually gives it a really cool effect. And if you were just going to use these as play pieces and not really worry about the art of painting, you could do just that and you'd have some pretty cool looking pieces on the, on the game board to play with. But we're going to take it a step farther. And if you join me in the next video, we will be talking about how to actually start painting now that he's all primed. So don't forget to look down below in the description of this video because I have a list of all of the products that I used um, and which ones I like the best. You may disagree and that's cool. Put that in the comments for which ones you think are even better and then that way I can check them out. But these are the ones that I have found that I like the most. You can also go back and watch the other videos to, and see the other products that I use and join me next time for actually painting. Now don't worry, it will not be in a tutorial video of how to paint Mad Eye Moody. It will be more along the lines of the steps and the products that we use to paint models. But I will see you all next time. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and have a great day.